Hello, and uh, welcome to Black Metal and Brews. Uh, I am Ben, and this is a program in which I talk into a screen in the hopes of uh, you know, finding myself, because I'm very lost. Uh, tonight... It's going to be a departure from that whole best of 2018, best of 2019 thing I've been doing. Uh, it's Saturday night, and I thought, uh, you know, a lot of us like to go out dancing, go to a show, go to the club on a Saturday night. So uh, we're going to uh, do some, you know, post-punk dark wave jams. Uh, one person is already watching this while driving because, uh, you know, that's how safety works, uh, you know. Uh, so we're off to a great start. Uh, I'm going to be the cause of death for somebody I love. Uh, what a what a night! So we've got a great beer picked out, uh, and I've got a handful of cassettes and records uh, so that we can kind of let this go as long as we'd like. Because dance parties are kind of meant to be that way, right? We're going to start with uh, some of my favorite boys. Uh, we got Body of Light. Uh, with their uh, cassette, Volanta de Amore. Is that how you pronounce it? I have no idea. Probably. I, I think that's Italian, or maybe Latin, I don't know. I'm bad at these things. And uh, once we get that going, we'll open this beer, which is from a pretty uh, well-repeated brewery. I just want to take a minute and show you this cool tape. This is from Chondritic Sound. Chondritic Sound, uh, not as active of the label as it used to be, though not inactive. He's still putting stuff out. It has some design uh, and just like art direction in general for a, for a small label, especially in that experimental noise world where I think a lot of the aesthetic, you know, is an important part of the piece. So this is a really good band. It's uh, two brothers. Well, I guess it's brothers, they're a duo. So. This is the A side of the tape. Uh, both sides are good, but we've got a lot of stuff to go through. Maybe we'll come back to the B side later. We're drinking Simcoe from Hill Farmstead Brewery in Vermont. Uh, you can tell pretty much right away these guys channeled that kind of mid to late eighties Depeche Mode sort of sound pretty well. Uh, kind of that uh, like you think of the song "Something to Do" by Depeche Mode. I feel like that was kind of the blueprint for Body of Light in this era. Body of Light now is a little different, uh, but still really wonderful. So, yeah, that Simcoe beer. Time to open it up and. Uh, have it, have a sip. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty. Look at that. So, you can see, uh, you know, pretty thin head, not a lot of carbonation. Big old citrusy nose, I love it. It's nice. It's it's really balanced. Like there's enough of a malt background to keep it from being like a bitter mess. If you're not familiar with Hill Farmstead, it's they're phenomenal. And I've been told on Instagram that the beer looks thick. It is. Hill Farmstead is kind of a northeastern treasure. Uh I have a lot of relatives in Vermont, which is how I got this beer. Uh, they just make really wonderful beers. So just, you know, that nice haze and density to it. Ooh, it's good. I feel like I had a couple of these with dinner at Thanksgiving, and it was a good time. Uh, so you got a nice, simple design on the can. Uh, you know, nothing outrageous, but really tasteful, which I like. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm always kind of interested in how people sell themselves. It says, Hill Farmstead Brewery is the culmination of travel and insight 
of friendships and explorations, and of realizing a sense of one's place. Upon the hand-hewn land of our forebears, we honor eight generations of Greensboro ancestry by thoughtfully engaging with our heritage and with our distinctive peers. This offering is our effort to revive, diversify, and prolong the memory of the Hill Farmstead. So, you know, it's more of a mission statement than anything, and that's cool. Uh, you know, I myself am a bit of a hippie, so, you know, not, not in the uh, dropping acid and being naked at outdoor festivals so much as the uh, environmental advocacy and trying to uh, respect the past and future and while still enjoying the present, so I'm cool with that. It's a good beer. They do a good job. So, if you're tuned in and uh, drinking something on your own, let me know what you're drinking. We can talk about that. Um, I intentionally made a point of checking the news a little less today because here in New York, it is bleak. <laughs> There's, uh, you know, uh, Autumn, my girlfriend, showed me a, kind of a map of like where most people are getting diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. And we are in one of the highest density areas, uh, our neighborhood specifically. Now, mind you, them getting diagnosed here does not mean that they live here. We're two blocks from a hospital, so a lot of people may just be getting diagnosed there. But all the same, that's not fun. Yeah, but this is. Um, you know, I know it's a little early to go to the club here in New York, and even earlier for my West Coast or other Center Coast, non-coast friends that may be watching. And I know it's a little different. It's too bright because you need to see me. There's no fog machines. Nobody has coke. I never do. I've never done it. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite different. But, you know, Saturday night and you got dragged to the golf club with me. Not everybody else you wish would be there. So we're making the most of it. Uh, this cassette came out, I believe, in 2013, maybe 2014, 2015, I think. Uh, it's great. Uh, I, at least I think so. Uh, we've got a lot of good people here on Instagram. Thank you for being here. Uh, a lot of lovely Canadians right now. I love you guys. Like, we got folks in at least three countries that I'm aware of. You know, we got UK, Canada, and, you know, here in uh, the heart of dumb fuckery uh, of this. And, yeah, and so uh, being told on Instagram uh, that our friend Vish loves the drum sound. Uh, are you able to pick up the sound well enough, guys? Let me know. I can turn this up if need be. Uh, my tape player goes quite loud. I just didn't want to overdo it and have to shout at you. But uh, if it's working, you know, and you can still hear me, I'll turn it up a bit. It's up to you. You know, this is an interactive experience, or at least it's meant to be. And uh, hello there. Uh, you got you got Lucas and Vish in uh, Canada. Don't don't know if you folks are anywhere near each other. Uh, but glad to have you. <laughs> and we got uh, at least one person in Texas, unless they've dropped out. Okay, that's why I, I thought you were in Toronto, Vish. Uh, I feel like Lucas may be around there too, but I, my memory is bad. I mean, with the internet, we, we have a lot more people that we keep up with than it used to be, and I feel like I do a decent job of remembering people's uh, particulars. Oh, that's right. Jim's in here too, hello. Lots of, lots of, uh, lots of you guys. And I really like all of you, so that's fitting. Uh, And I don't know if Vish makes music, but I know two of you also make music I really like. So, lots of love there. Boy, Instagram is just really happening. I gotta find a way to uh, 
take these Instagram things and upload them with commentary to YouTube. So I feel like the YouTube people uh, get left out, you know, no uh, love lost. Or, uh, but if, if you're all talking amongst yourselves, then that's, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Like the whole point is for this to be a social thing, for us to kind of connect and have something to do with each other rather than being home alone. We're still home alone, but uh, this is kind of what it is. So again, uh, as we're nearing the end, I know a few new people have joined in. We are listening to Body of Lights, Volante de Amor, from Chondritic Sound. Fantastic art direction from this label. Like, this was a... I mean, there's no bad era for Chondritic Sound, but for me, this was a big golden age. I was just becoming familiar with uh, more of the experimental electronic scene and how to network within it and find new music within it. And I found Chondritic Sound because of Body of Light. Uh, did I know... I don't know. Maybe it was just good luck that they have no work together. But uh, a lot of good stuff. I almost grabbed the Kamaru the tape I got from him too to play tonight, but I decided it's not quite uh, dancey clubby enough. So maybe maybe soon we'll play the Kamaru the tape because Kamaru is also absolutely wonderful. That's a little darker. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, you know, like, this music, uh, I've seen these guys live maybe three times, and I just, yeah, three, four? No, three. Three times. Uh, each time's just great. Uh, they're really sweet human beings, too. Uh, they've been prevented from playing a few shows, so uh, if, you've, if you're one of the lucky few still working and not like me and just doing nothing, uh, there will be a link in this video later on YouTube uh, for you to give them some money uh, by buying things from Bandcamp and other sources. Uh, yeah, they're great. Uh, and I think just, it, it's music that feels very much like home to me. Like, I don't know about you, but like there are certain bands I default to when it's like, I don't know what I want to hear. Uh, I'll just kind of be like, oh, I'm going to put that on. And uh, I'm being asked if this is Dead Zoo. Uh, you know, it might be, I have their first CD somewhere around here. I would put that on. I think that's a great album, honestly. Uh, no shame at all. I think that was a really interesting blend of, like, detuned guitars or downtuned guitars and sludgy tone. This effective vocals, weird synths, it's like everything I love. Uh, like, you know, no shame at all. You know... There's no synth guitar in this, so this is not Dead Sea. This is Bobby Wright. <laughs> yeah. And after this, I figure I uh, can uh, put on maybe a record in this kind of thing. Oh, so our friend Chris, who's got a lot of private things, so has seen Dead Z. I never saw them, but I, I've seen Corn. He saw them opening for Corn. I didn't have the best time seeing Corn. They, uh, it was during an era where they had decided to release a bunch of covers, and they played them all live. So it was like they played like another brick in the wall, which nobody needs to be covering that. And they did that cover of Word Up by Cameo, which I like Cameo. Like, I don't care what you think. I like Cameo. I like that kind of music. I do not need corn to be covering word up from Cameo. That was uh, uh, a very poor selection in their part, but also it was corn. You know, that it was not a show that I expected to really enjoy that much. And, you know, shockingly, I didn't. Uh, that was definitely one where I was brought along for the ride by somebody else. Uh, and, you know, I survived it. It, was, it, it wasn't terrible. It was like corn and then Lincoln Park. Uh, and I remember being just kind of grumpy the whole time. I saw some guy in a Dimmu Bordier shirt and I was really excited to see this guy in a Dimmu Bordier shirt, but I didn't, I couldn't talk to him because I was a teenager and you know, I was with people. Uh, and so like, I think the highlight of my night was seeing a guy in a Dimmu Bordier shirt. Uh, 
laughing at uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, who actually played a fine set, but it was just weird. And Lincoln Park covered Wish by Nine Inch Nails, and I was excited to hear a song I wanted to hear, so that was cool. But uh, all in all, that's a very 2003 kind of show. Uh, yeah. Oops. Yeah, and, and so in Instagram we're talking about uh, seeing a band get booed off stage now. Uh, the only band I've seen get booed off stage was Limp Bizkit when they were opening for Metallica. <laughs> um, or maybe they just played a shorter set than every other band and people just happened to be giving them the finger and stuff and booing. I don't know. Uh, so let's see. Let's, uh, let's throw on a record. So let's see, uh, with, wait, oh God, James, uh, I, th- that's the band that did that song, Laid, right? So uh, somebody in Instagram is saying, uh, our friend Vish is saying, rather, saw Corn uh, with James and Snoop Dogg. That is, that is a strange one. I'm assuming that's the James we're referring to. Uh, so next, uh, this is kind of a favorite record of mine that I keep coming back to. Uh, it's uh, Marshall Cantorell. Uh, and it's called Gyors Lasso. LA. I, I have no idea what it means. Looks or sounds Icelandic to me, but for all I know, it's stuff that he made up. He's also uh, half of the uh, local Brooklyn act, uh, Zeno and Oaklander. And he's uh, quite a talented musician. So we are going to play the uh, A side because it's got uh, like the opening jam alone is one of the coolest songs. I, it's it's a bummer because there's like a, each side has at least one song that I'm like is really special to me. Uh, but we're gonna go with this one. I think it's just a, a really fun song. If I can even get the record on the table. So there we are. All right. So. Again, uh, yeah, like what a killer track to open a record with. And hello, Sarah Beth. Uh, we got a whole fan to join in here now. So again, this is uh, Marshall Cantorell with Gyors Lasso. So, pretty good art. But it's really hard to get to show up because the lighting in this room is kind of red and orange facing me. So let's see, maybe if I put it really close, it'll look different. Uh, not so much. It's good. It's kind of these like cream colors though. Like it's, it's like a peach colored thing. So, you know, you get what you get. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, I actually put on the B side instead of the A side, but it's still great. Right. They're both killer. Because I was thinking the first track on each side is like my favorite jam on that side. So I'm just like, oh, here we go. For that moment, though. Yeah, so this song is called Boulevard. It's just ridiculously like energy dance jams. So, again, yeah, because uh, we have people that keep joining, uh, we are drinking Hill Farmstead Simcoe. What's a good beer? It's a. Uh, American pale ale brewed with Simcoe hops. Uh, so, you know. Yeah. And nobody's coming to live with me. Uh, 
I already live with one person, and that's quite enough. Uh, on Instagram, for those watching on YouTube, we have uh, our friend Chris suggesting his wife comes to live with me. Oh, for, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. I guess it's weird because I can only kind of like make out the Instagram stuff a little bit without. I have to come in like this to see it properly. So it's like, oh, I'm often surprised by what you guys are saying, but also not at all. I love how absolutely just fuzzy and thick uh, his music is. Like, this is just such dense music, but it also still feels very clear what he's doing or trying to do. Uh, you know, the melody is strong, the vocal line is strong, the drums are never so buried that you can't get it in a Ooh, and somebody's about to have a shower beer. Uh, congratulations. What kind of shower beer are we having? Ah. Uh, so. Oh, that's interesting. So we've got a... Uh, what's the beer just popped up uh, from our friend Vish? It is Simcoe from Hill Farmstead. Uh... I didn't know that I could get questions through the thing like that. I thought you guys just had to kind of talk shit to me and I hopefully noticed. Uh, yeah, Hill Farmstead is based out of Vermont. They're really wonderful. I've had three of their beers and uh, they're, uh, each of them is quite good. Uh, our friend Chris in Texas is drinking Lone Star, which is a classic Texan beer. I don't think I've ever had it. So, send some. I will chug a Lone Star on video if I get that sent to my door. I haven't chugged anything in years. I think somebody made me shotgun a beer on my 29th birthday, and that was a strange experience. I'd never shotgunned anything before, and I haven't since. Uh, Yes, it, nobody made me do it. It was strongly suggested by the other person whose birthday it was. And, uh, I'm having, this track is also great. Yeah, this is like, this is one of those records where every time I put this on, uh, I, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite song, and then the next one is also my favorite song, and then the, also my favorite song. But yeah, this is killer. Uh, I don't know how you... Oh, you want to like be added to the live stream uh, to chug a beer? Uh, somebody wants to be added to the live stream on Instagram, so may as well. Lone Star can only be shotgun. Oh, yeah, everybody seems to be chugging and shotgunning things. I, are, are we all coping with being locked inside by just drinking too much? I mean, I'm pretty much just having the one beer a day because I only have a few, <laughs> and so I'm trying to make them last. Because I don't know what I'll do when I run out of beer, so I have to do these live videos. I'll be like, here's my glass of water. How are you? Um, but, yeah. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a cold day here, so I kind of consider drinking a bigger, stronger, darker beer, but... Uh, I opted for this because it just looked really desirable. I and you know, I did what I wanted to do. I drank a beer that's you know, quite good. Okay, so on Instagram we have a request for somebody to be in my video. How do I do this? I'm trying. I'm learning. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. I'm gonna position this too so that people on YouTube can see it. Okay, let's see how this goes. So, 
so it's trying to connect with that so that we can have an extra person. There we are. So if you're watching on YouTube, here it is. He's got his cat. Uh, and your uh, you know, Instagram folks are seeing, you're probably having like a weird inception thing. This is great though. Okay, you got an obituary shirt for one. This is great. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh. oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Love you, ben. Love you too, Chris. Bye bye. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Dude, that was so good. Uh, that, that just. Okay, that. See, that just made this so much more fun. Yeah, yeah I guess uh, that's what that's what Lone Star is apparently made for. Uh, that 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 was that was cool. That was fun. Uh, boy, and if you're watching on YouTube, I just turned red from that because uh, this is like a problem it has. There we go. I I've turned back to my regular color now. Uh, yeah. Shotgunning things. I haven't shotgun seen in a long time, but yeah, Chris is a legend. Uh, for, and honestly, Chris makes music would be appropriate for this too. A little less uh, overtly dark, wavy, and more all over the place experimental electronic stuff that's still super uh, rad shit. We listened to some of Chris's music the other night, uh, Kareem Jade being one of his projects. But yeah, uh, Chris is a legend. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we should uh, probably all be doing stuff like that. Uh, there was a, a while ago when, like, I mean, we're talking maybe three years ago, I really, really wanted to do a video of me getting a ridiculously expensive beer that comes in a can, like whatever, I don't know what kind, and just shotgunning something. There's <laughs> like a, you know, like a $15 or $20 beer. Uh, but I'm not... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I still will one day, but it just didn't seem like a good idea. Like, I felt like I'd just get a lot of beer people angry at me and anybody that would appreciate the joke of intentionally doing something irreverent to, uh, you know, Lindor. I should shotgun a stout. Actually, I'm going to... I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna to run to the kitchen and grab this gigantic beer, which I'm not gonna shotgun because I actually it, it's a beer for an album, but I'll come right and show you this huge stout I gotta drink soon. <laughs> you can tell, or it's a coffee brown, excuse me. Uh this is 32 ounces of beer, so I'm not going to shock it, but uh, sometime soon I'm going to have to drink this, and it's going to be a lot. Uh, this is a beer that was made for the band The Lion's Daughter, so I'll be doing that soon, probably in the next couple days. Uh, I should uh, shotgun a 14% imperialist out. If I can find something like that in a can, I, I mean, I'll try anything once, you know. I, you know, all for my, you know, audience, the thousands of you tuned in uh, but also I mean you know, what else am I going to do anyway, I'm going to go put this back in the fridge before uh, we have problems with it and there we are was that a crowler? You know, I've heard of the term crowler, but I don't know. That was a beer that was shipped to me in the mail by Season of Mist, uh, the record label, by their old uh, PR person, uh, Enrique Sagarnaga, who is uh, now uh, doing stuff with Relapse Records instead. Uh, he's in the band Crit Sermon. Uh, Enrique sent me the beer. 
Uh, so I, I've heard the term crowler, but I'm not sure. I, it's just a gigantic can of beer. Like I have a 32 ounce canned beer. Uh, so maybe it's a crowler. What's weird? I've been hearing about like lines for growler fills during all this, and it's like, you know, if there's ever a time when I wouldn't. You know, maybe I'm just being paranoid when I wouldn't want like my thing being put up to a spigot that everybody else's thing is being put up to. Like now is if there was ever a time where I didn't want to do growler fills and stuff, it would be now. Uh, you know, so that I can just one more jam. Uh, so that I can just, you know, get canned beers and bottled beers that, you know, I know that there's as little contact with somebody else uh, in terms of sanitation. That feels right to me. Uh but you know, uh, whatever. I guess. Uh, you know, it might be a crawler. Yeah. So judging by what folks are saying, it probably is. This is a 32 ounce can from St. Louis, Missouri, which is the town that band is from. And it's only it was only available at the brewery itself for a short while. Uh, so I think I'm one of the only people outside of the South to have that. Uh, you know, it's, I, I'm excited to try that. Uh, so I guess in the next couple of days, I'll be playing that whole Lion's Daughter album that that beer is meant for and, uh, and drinking that, uh, drinking all 32 ounces of that big gigantic coffee beer. Uh, also, I don't think there's going to be caffeine in it. Obviously, most things brewed with coffee are not going to have co caffeine. But it's going to be really fun for me. I haven't been able to have coffee since uh, I got really sick last year. So it's been almost 14 months since I've had coffee. And yes, I miss it every day. Yeah, this, this is a jam. This whole this whole record is a jam. This is on Dias Records, which I've played some stuff from them recently already. Uh, Body of Light, in fact, is now signed to this label. They weren't at the time. Um, and they put out gosh, they put out the VR Sex tape I played the other day, uh, among others. I can't speak highly enough about Dias Records. Uh, you know. They're, they do really good stuff in the like, experimental dark wave scene and others. Uh, and especially like, with the dark spooky stuff. I think Drag Majesty is on Dives, uh, which is like the band everybody knows from. I think Drag Majesty toured with Smashing Pumpkins last year, which is insane. Like the, I saw them in a bar with like a capacity of 50 a few years ago. <laughs> Uh, and it was great um, to see that band now blowing up. Uh, I mean, well deserved. And the last time I saw them, they were opening for Death Heaven in uh, the Brooklyn Steel here, which I think is like a 2000 capacity venue or something ridiculous like that. Maybe bigger. I don't know. I'm a terrible judge of room capacity. It's the same way as Mr. Bungle and Stereo Lab played recently, though. Not the same show. Two shows. Uh, but I figure Mr. Bungle and Stereo Lab are both bands that have enough thousands of people to show, right? At least in the city, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so some jams. Keeping it kind of gothy, kind of dark wavy. Uh, I think next we're going to go a little more post punk. Uh, I'm going to start uh, fast forwarding. Let's kind of, it looks like I was recently in the middle of a listen when I stopped it. I, I try not to do that, but sometimes it just happens. Life gets uh, the better of us. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm going to put this right away and uh, then we're going to start playing the tape again in just a moment. Maybe. 
Oh, that's right. I left the sleeve in the sleeve. So I'm almost done with my beer. Uh, there's been zero conversation whatsoever on YouTube, unfortunately. I love you guys on YouTube, too. Say something if you'd like to. I am responsive. Uh, so maybe, should I get a second beer? Uh, you know, Instagram people or YouTube people, feel free to chime in. Maybe we'll do, this will be a two-beer show. I've never done that before. Uh, so it could be fun. So the tape we're about to listen to, in fact, is right is captive with black leather glove. Uh, this this one was released by Monophonic Press. I thought this was somebody else. Oh yeah, Monophonic Press. But it's a uh, it's quite a good one. Uh, I could have sworn. Oh gosh, I feel stupid. I thought it was a different a label out of Texas. Uh, maybe this was released in conjunction with them. I don't know. Anyway, this is fantastic. Okay, so we're going to have a second beer in a minute, and we're going to listen to Captive. Uh, Captive's singer is Rusty Kelly, uh, also of Breathing Problem, uh, one of my favorite uh, kind of power electronics, dark ambient, terrifying bands. Oh, right. I'm going to switch uh, to tape as my audio source. Uh, so, and Rusty Kelly is also in Total Abuse, which is just a gnarly raw punk band. This is him doing more of a, uh, well, you'll hear it. I really like it quite a bit. So, this is the inlay. There's nothing on the uh, refraining from showing you stuff. Gallery. We're getting uh, quite a crowd here on uh, Instagram, having a good time. Lots of folks coming in to say hello. Hello to all of you, having a moment of uh, confusion. Okay, yeah, yeah, hello. I thought I had a notification of some sort, but I don't. I just have no idea what I'm doing. You know, as, it, as one does. This kicks in right here, so good. So, now it's time for a Founders beer. Uh, we've got the Green Zebra, which is a Goza Ale with watermelon and sea salt. All Gozas have sea salt, unless I'm wrong. If you're watching this and know better, tell me I'm wrong. 
But I'm pretty sure that they all have it. Uh, so, gonna give this a shot. Four, four and a half percent alcohol. So, nice, should be light enough. There we go. Hmm. So this is uh, a little more on that you know, standard yellowy side. It does have that light fruit nose. I mean, it's fruit with melon, I'd hope so. Mm. Smells good. Uh, that head's dissipating pretty quickly, but there's a lot of effervescence in there, as you can probably see. Oh, well, it's like a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> Mind you, I love a Jolly Rancher, but that was surprising. It's really sweet. It tastes like candy watermelon, too, more than like watermelon, watermelon. This is definitely a dessert. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's good, but uh, I, I don't know how many people would like it. This is kind of like, is it trash beer? I don't know, but. It's sugary. Like I feel like that same thing. Like when I drink uh, white wine and I get a headache from the sugar, I feel like that's gonna happen from this. It's all right. Now again, thunders, green zebra, absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> There's like no bitterness, no malt. It was just like pure smooth sugar and salt. Like, I, I think I like this because it reminds me of being just 21 and like drinking everything that I could get my hands on because I could. Just having that kind of omnivorous beer approach. I'm drinking a lot of things that are really sweet or whatever because it tastes good. Uh, I drank so much cider back then. Now I can't because I get acid reflux the second I have any cider. But this almost hits that more of like, like a raspberry cider or something. Like a, a lambic perhaps. It's sweeter. Way sweeter. <laughs> So you can tell that uh, these guys probably like, you know, enjoy New Order, enjoy the cure of a certain era, enjoy Christian death, maybe even uh, more more of his vocal inflection than anything. Yeah, I really like it. This tune does slap. I've been told this tune slaps on Instagram. Uh, it, it slaps. I enjoy it quite a bit. I like this, like, pretty much the whole take is great. And I have it on vinyl somewhere, but I have. A lot of the time when I grab things, it's about access, like, you know, because I keep my tapes and records in those, like, expedited things from Ikea. Um, but because my tapes will be, like, 5D, because, like, the tapes that face me are the ones I'm going to pick from. Uh, and so, really, I just have enough records that a lot of times if I don't find something quickly, I give up on it, because I don't have an organizational system at all. There's no rhyme or reason to anything. There was at one point in, you know, when I lived in Florida, maybe, uh, and I had 100 records and tapes instead of over a 1,000. Uh, 
It is what it is, you know? We make do, though, don't we? I love that bass. Yeah, you can do that to a new love, new order. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. This game hasn't done anything in ages. And it kind of, it kills me if they haven't done anything. Uh, I just read the label I thought this was on was Calico Grounds. But it doesn't say it was, so. Who knows? And then, my friend asked this to him, uh, hello. So, uh, for those on Instagram, Ash, uh, you just joined. Uh, everybody has shared what beers they're drinking because everybody's having one. Because what else are you doing in lockdown? It may be a little early in California if that's where you still are, presumably. So, let me know what you're drinking. Let us all know. I at the moment I started with a Hill Farmstead, but it was small, so I'm drinking this now. It's a watermelon goza, and it kind of tastes good Valley Rancher. I feel like this should be dessert. I, mean, I feel like honestly, this should have like twenty percent alcohol, be a liquor uh, that that people drink, you know, when they're going out with their friends who are all over the age of twenty three. Bloody Mary at late brunch. That sounds good. I haven't had a Bloody Mary in a while. Every time I have them, they make me sick because I because my ulcerative colitis. Uh, but I love uh, I love Bloody Marys, especially if you get the celery in it. Like if it doesn't have celery in it, like what are they even doing? Okay. Like, I've had to make a lot of recently, and that was good too. I'm thinking about getting some of those like Medela Nicoladas to drink on these, real classy like. Uh, I didn't have one until a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was like summer 2017 maybe. I'm my first scan to make a lot of. Excuse me. And it, uh, my, my girlfriend filmed me taking my first sip. You know, kind of like, oh, what's he gonna think? And, uh, I, I remember saying, like, oh, this is like tomato soda. It was like one of those Modelo Tallboy Micheladas, uh, which was really good. Uh, it's completely ridiculous, but it's great. We have Caesars with brunch. Okay, so again, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sorry. I've been asked on Instagram if we have Caesars with brunch, and I'm not sure what that is unless you mean a Caesar salad, but it's spelled differently, so. I'm also not a big fan bruncher in general. Uh, I have nothing against brunch. Uh, it's just a way of like lazily having less meals a day, which is economically savvy. Uh, I just don't go out for it as much. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, a Canadian Bloody Mary Nicolata variant is a Caesar. I'm going to need to try this. Caesar's 
secret. And I've also been told now about a secret aardvark red eye beer. I've never had that, but when I lived in Portland, secret aardvark was the jam. That was like, I would buy that sauce and go through it quickly. It was one of the best parts of living out there was having ready access to that hot sauce. Uh, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't had that in a while, and I'm not sure what the red eye beer is. Uh, Oh. Boy, I'm, I'm seeing people really going in about brunch. Chris from Gloga and Korean Jade likes a savory entree with a side of something sweet like Pinterest or pancakes. Uh, I, I I can't put it away like I used to. So I usually just like I recently had a like a vegan biscuits and gravy, but the gravy was a curry gravy. So it was like this like curry gravy sauce. Uh, with like the most doughy biscuits. I don't know how you make a vegan biscuit that good and seitan chunks. It was ridiculous. It was sinful. Like, even if you're not vegan, because I'm not, but I have mad love for veganism and vegans. Uh, and vegan biscuits and gravy that blew my mind. Uh, like that's my sort of direction that I go with a run. It's like, oh, I'm like, oh, this looks spicy and creamy. I'm going to have that. And uh, our friend Alcohol and Tears just joined. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you're in the live chat on Instagram, uh, we're all sharing uh, the beers that we are having. So we'd love to hear yours. I'm having a Founders Watermelon Gosa, and it tastes like a Jolly Rancher. Like it should be a liqueur for, for underagers, honestly. But I'm enjoying it out of like nostalgia for being exactly that demographic. Curry fries and Irish. Oh man! Does it, I get? I, I got the curry biscuits and gravy at a uh, an English pub here in the neighborhood. They, they serve a full English breakfast and stuff. Uh, you know, it's 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 good. But obviously, I'm not going anywhere for a long time. I haven't for a long time. But today's day 17 for me. I don't know about you guys. Been indoors a while. Curry gravy for me and chips Indian food. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, no, I I miss Indian food. There's an Indian spot in our neighborhood that we're thinking of ordering delivery from soon simply because they uh, I feel like their business had been flagging for a long time before this and I really want to support them. And also I want to get some of that I don't know how to say it right. And I know there's at least one person in here who'll correct my pronunciation. Please. Navratan Korma, Navratan Korma. So good, I'm addicted to it. I miss that. Uh, yeah, no. And uh, our friend Adam is joining. Welcome, Adam. Good to have you. Again, I'm drinking a Founders Watermelon Gosa. It's, uh, I can drink it. it. Reminds me of being 20. Uh, and we're all sharing what we're drinking. So if you are having a drink, let me know. Again, if you're on YouTube watching this, let me know there too. The goal is not to let anybody feel alone, but you don't have to. Maybe you just like hearing the jams behind you and I'm talking over good music. And again, then a few people joined. We're listening to Captive. It's a uh, Rusty Kelly from Total Abuse and Breathing Problems, like post punk band. It's really good. On that side, this is the last track on this side, so pretty soon I'm gonna have to put on a record, and I've got a hell of a record for you guys. So I hope that you are all enjoying channeling your inner uh, team goth, getting that big. Uh, you know, uh, somber, melodramatic. Like, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the gossip with the hair flip, just like the emo types did. Uh, at least for me, 
because I, you know, I live in the era of both. And I was certainly on Team Goth, but, uh, you know, the influence of one was unavoidable. And that's that for Captive. So we are going to listen to Ulver. Uh, so Ulver, or Ulver if you're American, uh, one of my favorite bands. I played them just the other night on here, but not this. This is uh, the Sick Transit Gloria Mundi L- LP EP. Got that great uh, Francis Bacon art. Uh, and uh, we're going to listen to the A side of this because the B side is uh, live tracks, which are wonderful. I, I, I've seen these guys live. It was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. But uh, I want to play this EP for you. Beautiful purple vinyl. And I always forget, are we uh, 45 or 33? Not sure. It'll become apparent pretty quickly if this is meant to be played at a different speed. But maybe we'll keep it. So, over, over, whatever you want to call them. They're brilliant, I think. Uh, they, If you don't know, if you're one of the people who's made it 57 minutes into one of my videos and you're wondering, they started as a black metal band. They became a weird ambient group. And now they're making kind of modern new wave. I'm not sure how to describe it. And as I've been told, uh, our friend Vish is jealous that I've seen Ulvec. Uh I saw them at Roadburn 2018 for the album release show for the assassination of Julius Caesar. Uh, it was a record that was not out yet at the time. I'd heard the promo tracks because I write about music. So I was really excited, but uh, it was their live debut of that material, which is really cool. Uh, selfishly, I'd like to see them again and see them play stuff from more of their career than just one record. Not because anything's wrong with that record, but because I have so many songs I love from so many different eras that it'd be cool to get a more all-encompassing experience of it. And so I, somebody, uh, our friend Ash, has said on Instagram that he, they're making the best Depeche Mode albums on the planet. And honestly, I think Depeche Mode still is. Uh, there's enough of a distinction between the two for me. That new Depeche Mode record was killer spirit. It took me a minute, but I loved it. And uh, Chris is saying it'd be cool if they played a half synth pop, half black metal set. I think that would be interesting, but they haven't done, they haven't put out a black metal album in like 23 years. Uh, I don't, I don't think that that's, I don't, half the members of the band, uh, I think the singer is the only person that was there for the black metal era at this point. Uh, maybe one of the other guys, I forget. Uh, it would be almost weird. That said, I would love to see a Perdition City era set. Or even something with guitars, like, you know, like the Marriage of Heaven and Hell material. Uh, like, Perdition City is one of my all-time favorite records by anybody. Uh, and I, I love that whole ambient era, the, you know, silencing the singing and all of that, all those things that kind of came around at that point. So that would be really neat to see. But I, I just don't know if that'll happen. But this EP, until recently, was like, it, it was their most, this isn't their most recent. Uh, but they, they put out a drone activity album, it's called Drone Activity, which is kind of a live thing. Oh, jeez. Oh, 
Well, if you're watching on YouTube, my apologies. I'm resetting uh, Instagram because it, it stopped. Uh, it cut me off because it's been an hour. So, sorry about that. Uh, somebody, somebody commented that it's no Natten's, Natten's Madrigal, and that's true. They're very different records, uh, but I love both. But, yeah. So, I think I've got uh, maybe one more tape after this. Uh, Sorry if you're watching on Instagram and you got cut off. Uh, I had been streaming for an hour, and usually it gives me a warning saying, hey, it's been an hour. We're about to end this, but it didn't. It just ended, so my apologies. Uh, so thanks for rejoining. Uh, and Oh, boy, and we've got a, another request from our friend Chris to be in my video. So let, let's see what that entails at this point. Uh, Hi, Chris. We're adding you to the live video. Uh, and if you're watching here, you're, I, I'll show it to you too. Uh oh. I'm hearing audio. Hello, Ben. Hi, did you just start an audio only join in? I'm taking my clothes off. You're taking your clothes off. Hello. You're on YouTube, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Lone Stars? Oh boy. Uh, yeah, he's, Chris is having a shower beer and he's also glitching out. On his, he's having a shower beer and yelled black metal and bruise, baby. <laughs> That's kind of amazing, to be fair. So, uh, hello, uh, Sanskar. Hello, Bethany. Uh, hello, all of you. Uh, Thanks for joining in. Uh, glad to have you all here. And uh, if, if anybody's having problems with anything, you can always dip out. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm just ding dong playing records and drinking beer, which I'd be doing alone anyway. Uh, it'd be cool to one day like start up, find it, figure out a way to do these as like a thing where I get somebody specific, like a person of note. I don't know what that would be, but like somebody to join in you know, musician or something or brewer for that matter and do one of these with me from a distance uh, and our friend Buff Tony has said hello uh, Six Point Resin is a great one I haven't had that in a while but that's classic and I feel like all these comments are coming through after the fact I'm wondering how if the uh, video stream it on Instagram is behind everything else, but uh, if so, my apologies. I'm responding to the comments as soon as I see them. Cheers. Oh, good. I've been told everything went glitchy for a bit, but we're good again, so that's good to know. Uh, internet sucks. Last night it ruined our stream entirely. It cut me off after 15 minutes or so. And uh, I deleted the video because it was just so messy. Uh, I, I wonder if that's going to be a continuing theme. Because I really feel like the internet is one of the only things keeping most of us sane and connected now that we're in the era of social isolation and distancing. So who knows? Buff Tony. Buff Tony. Uh so my friend Bethany joined on, and her uh, her partner, my friend Sean, is one of my oldest friends, and I love Bethany too. Uh, but uh, we, uh, when I was in California recently, for my best best friend's funeral, which I never hope to experience in my life ever again, uh, I stayed with another friend of ours, and his two year old daughter kept calling Bethany Buffany. Because she couldn't really say Bethany. This video isn't getting deleted. Uh, I've Chris, my friend Chris, Chris has said if I delete this, there will be a problem. But this is not getting 
deleted at all. Uh, we are keeping this video. It's good. Uh, we, we love sharing things. And uh, yeah. yeah, having fun, hanging out. You know, it's it's all good. Uh, we are definitely going to keep Chris shotgunning a beer on YouTube forever, and Chris being in the shower drinking beer too. I feel like that's you know the whole point of me doing these as a live stream rather than talking by myself has been to connect with people, and having that human element come into play is really the only reason. Otherwise, these things would still be fifteen minutes, like all the old ones. Uh, I don't know how to fill up this much time. I don't want to, for that matter. Like, about me at least, like, that's weird. Uh, but hanging out with you guys and all that, that's really cool. That's really fun. Um, like, having, having an element of connectivity, being around other people, uh, sharing things we love, being silly, getting a chance to, like, play. Uh, you know, it's something that a lot of us lose as adults, that sense of play wonder and imagination goes away when we become adults and i don't know why i never lost that really although i'm sure that my shape of it has changed uh it's really important to me to connect with people especially through play that's what music is to me so i think it'd be really cool to find a way to film things and uh you know, have, have more than just me and them, even though I'm the only person here, uh, you know, I mean, my auto, my girlfriend is in the other room, but I don't think she wants to be part of this anyway. <laughs> and, you know, but it'd be cool. And the more I think about it, it'd be fun to do like interviews or, uh, just bring somebody else on to make it not just Ben talking at a computer and you guys commenting. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'm learning a lot as I go these days. And I had thought initially that I'd be playing another thing after this, but I'm realizing I'm almost 70 minutes deep. I don't want to uh, subject anybody to yet another thing for me. So instead what I'll do is I'll add that next album to next week's Goth Dance Party. And maybe I'll do it every Saturday. It was the Goth Night. Uh, you know, this isn't very gothic. It's just kind of dancey, clubby, electro y, but good enough, right? So, in case you're not aware, this one is a cover of a uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood song. But, uh, you know, it's still it's beautiful. I think it's really interesting. Uh, obviously, it's not relaxed. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to wind this down now. I'm glad to have had you guys here for this very, very, very long video. Uh, and especially like for some of you like going buff to me, uh, you know. Let's, let's talk uh, FaceTime. You know, if anybody has my number, by all means, get in touch with me directly. I don't like being uh, an entertaining figure. But, uh, again, uh, if you're new here, welcome. Glad to have had you. Uh, if you're not, thanks for sticking around. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be posting a playlist on patreon.com slash black metal and brews. It's public. You don't have to pay me money. The economy is in a downturn. We're all losing our jobs because of this pandemic. I'm not asking anything of you. That's just where I'm posting it. Because uh, I need somewhere to host it. This is my website. So I don't want my website to be cluttered with that. I want reviews on my website. Um, yeah. So check that out in the morning. And tomorrow night, we'll be doing this again, like we do every night. And we'll continue to do for the duration of the pandemic. You know, knock on wood so long as I retain my health and can do this. Uh, hopefully I will never catch this and can stay able to keep doing it. Uh, yeah. And here we are. The power of love. Thank you for being here. I'm Ben. You're you. Uh, 
this has been a very long episode of Black Melon Burns. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you guys for being here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, cheers. With that, we're closing out the uh, YouTube one for sure. Somebody just joined on Instagram, so we'll go a minute longer on Instagram. Hello. All right, Farhad, welcome.